Bowman here from BW1 and in this video I want to show you how to create a virtual machine using Windows Hyper-V. Windows Hyper-V is pretty cool. It's included in Windows 8.1 for consumers. It's also in the server environment as well too. In this video I'm going to show you this is going to be a very basic tutorial, basic steps, just to get people kind of started in the virtual machine. So don't look for anything too advanced here. This is really just to kind of just jump people into the whole virtual and virtualization environment here. One of the things you have to make sure, and most processors already kind of do this, you want to make sure that you have an Intel process that it supports virtualization, and you want to make sure it's turned on in BIOS. So you probably want to consult your manual and instructions for your PC to make sure all those functionalities are turned on. Usually it's turned on by default, but just in case you might need to turn that on to to get this started. Now the next thing you need to do is if you have to have Windows 8.1 here, if you're using it on a, just on a regular consumer PC, you want to want to right click, go to programs and features, let's bring it over here to open up in the other window, and then you want to choose turn Windows features on or off. From there, you want to check on the box that says Hyper-V. So you check on that box, it will start to install the software, turn everything on, then it's going to ask you to reboot, you do a quick reboot, and then you have Hyper-V turned on. If you go into your start menu, you'll actually see it listed right here. It says Hyper-V and then Hyper-V Manager. Hyper-V Manager, Hyper-V Virtual Machine, these two things right here. That kind of lets you know that it's turned on. And I kind of pinned it to my desktop here. So Now, you open it up. We're in Hyper-V Manager. This is where we're going to create our virtual machines. Um, you probably guys may have heard of this before. You probably heard it more with VMware. That's really sort of the big player in the market. And what pretty much the majority of businesses and companies really use but Hyper-V is sort of Microsoft's competitor to that and it's pretty cool and I think it's a really good useful tool to sort of get a free and basic way into learning how to use VMs here and like I said this is going to be a very basic tutorial so um, don't look for anything too advanced here with this. So the first thing I want to do here in creating a virtual machine is I actually need to create a virtual Ethernet connection if I want it to have internet. So I need to essentially share my current physical internet connection that's on my computer on my PC which you see right here this one right here and share it with a virtual machine now the way you do that is you have to actually create a virtual switch so the first thing you want to do is click on virtual switch manager and when you click on that you have a few options here from external internal and private depending on what your situation is here but I wanted to actually have an internet connection so we're going to choose external and then click on create virtual switch We'll jump into that. We'll just call this uh, something basic. Uh, I'm going to be setting up Windows 10 on this, so we call it Windows 10 Virtual Switch, just to give it a name. And then it's going to ask, what's the external network, basically the physical real-world connection that you're going to use, and that's going to be this one right here. And allow management operating system to share this network adapter, which is what we're going to do as well, too, because I could have two network adapters in here and dedicate one to virtual and dedicate the other to my physical machine if I really want to separate it out. You can do that. depends if you want to have things on separate VLANs and so on. It's obviously different different things, different strokes and such that for different folks if you how you want to set up your um, virtual machine here. Once everything's set up there, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. I'll apply rather. It's going to tell you the computer may lose internet connection, which you're actually going to see here in a second. It's going to do that. So you want to go ahead and yes. And what you'll see here is it'll disconnect and then it's going to reconnect everything back up. And then it makes a brand new connection here that says V Ethernet Windows 10 virtual switch. So that's what that is. That's basically the second switch or the virtual switch that's going to be used in your VM environment when you're making your um, virtual machine. So that's what that that's what that's going to be there as well, too. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's bring that back up. Let's go ahead and OK. You can also turn VLAN ID if you want to use that as well, too. We'll leave that off for now. I'm just using really just doing everything kind of by default here. All right. So now we have the virtual switch set up here. So now we actually need to create a virtual machine. Now we can import them in if we have ones created from a previous machine, but we're actually just going to create a brand new one. So you want to hit new, you want to hit virtual machine, and it's going to bring you through the wizard here. It gives you a little before you begin. It kind of lets you know what you kind of need to do here. We're going to hit next. We're going to name the new virtual machine. We're just going to name it something simple, Windows 10. Now, it has a default location that it stores it in. I'm actually going to change that. Um, you can store this on any drive. If you want to store the uh, the virtual machine, you want to locate it maybe on a different hard drive, you can do that as well, too. Just to keep things simple, I like to just store it on my um, root of C drive where it says virtual machines. And I'm just going to pretty much select that folder. And that's where everything's going to stay. We'll hit next. 
Now you can choose if you want Generation 1 hardware, Generation 2 hardware. Basically, the difference is, is Generation 2 hardware allows you to secure boot, SCSI boot, Pixie boot, and you at least have to have Windows Server 2008 64-bit version of Windows 8. Basically, you get more advanced options with the newer operating system using Generation 2 hardware, which we want to choose here because we're going to be testing with Windows um, 10 here. So let's go ahead next. Here we're gonna choose how much startup memory it starts up with. And you have the option to use dynamic memory as well too. So this can kind of resize so it doesn't lose memory if you don't want it to. In this case, you have to put in megabytes and I wanna basically dedicate how much memory I have on my machine. When this is turned on, this is how much I wanna allow this virtual machine to use of my physical memory. So um, basically the easy math for this is 10, 10, 24, 10,000, I mean, excuse me, 1,200, 1,024 rather, I'm getting the numbers wrong there, but 1024 basically equals to one megabyte. So 1,000 to 1,024 megabytes equals to one gigabyte there. I'm getting the math wrong and getting the numbers confused there, but you kind of get the idea. So if I want to have six gigs of memory dedicated to this, I will make 1,024 times six. That's the number that I have there. That's what I'm going to type in here to make sure I have six, six gigs of RAM I'll dedicated to it here. Let's go ahead and type that in. All right. Go ahead and X that box out there. We can use uh, dynamic memory for this. We'll use that. We'll just check that box off for now. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Hit next. Now it needs a network connection if you want it to have connection to the internet. That's where we use our Windows 10 virtual switch to be able to create that internet connection for it. Hit next. Now we have to actually give it a hard disk. It needs an actual hard drive here. So we can create one later. We can use an existing one if we want to. And we can change, choose the location and the size. So I'm going to change it to MCC virtual machines, Windows 10 virtual hard disk. It's already in the location I want it to be in. I'm going to give it 32 gigabytes of actual storage space. So I have enough space on the drive that I'm putting it on, then I can add this on here. So remember, when you put this in, it's sharing your resources. So whatever you dedicate this to when you have this on, this is what this is going to use in the conjunction with your actual physical machine that you're running the virtual machine off of. All right, 32 gigs, go ahead next. And I can install operating system now, so I'll let system later from bootable image if I want to, or network based installation or so we're gonna just skip that for now. Hit next, hit summary, hit finish. It's gonna create the disk. And there you go, there is our Windows 10 virtual machine ready. Still have to add a couple of things here to it. So I need to install an operating system at some point, but I want to use that through an ISO and I got to create a virtual CD drive for that. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go in here to the um, Windows 10 settings. And this is where you can edit everything. So you can change everything even after that wizard. You want to add hardware, change firmware. I want to add processing power to it. I actually do want to do that. I want to actually add, I want to at least make this a dual core. I'm going to add make a quad core just for the heck of it. I have an X core processor on this machine. So I want to give it four virtual core processors, virtual processors on here to make it a little bit faster. So I can change the RAM if I want to as well to my memory weight. Um, but I actually want to add a CD-ROM drive. And the way you want to do that is you want to add hardware. It's going to ask if you want to add a SCSI controller, network adapter, a fiber channel adapter, and we'll choose SCSI. It's pretty simple. Hit next. And we actually want to add a DVD drive. Hit add. It's going to ask if you want to add some media to it. Did we want to add in there? We'll go ahead and do that now. So we'll add the image file here. We'll go ahead and browse. And we'll actually, let's go down here to storage. Let's go to software. And let's add the technical preview ISO. We'll hit apply. And now that's set on the machine here. And you can actually change some other settings here under management as well to the name, integrated services, and such and so on. So. You can have automatic stop actions and you can really customize this pretty much any way you really want to. We'll hit OK. And now we're at the point we need to power it on. So basically we can we can hit the start button and it'll turn it on. We hit connect. And I actually open up the window here and it's going to tell you this machine is turned off, just like if a physical machine was turned off. Hit the green button right here, hit start. Boom. And you'll see the Hyper-V sort of logo pop up. And what should happen in a few seconds here, it should already show the media is already loaded in here. We should be able at some point to boot from the ISO like it's an actual physical CD drive to install Windows on here. So let's go ahead and, all right, it's trying to pixie boot here, but we should be able at some point to be able to skip beyond this and get into, once this is kind of finished and looking for its pixie boot here, we could change it into settings in a little bit so it doesn't do that and it just kind of goes off of the CD-ROM drive. It should come up in just a moment here. All right, there we go. We'll go ahead and boot from the disk as it says right there. Boot from CD, DVD. We hit the 
button and in just a second we should see the Windows 10 prompt and now we can install the operating system here so that's pretty much it for basically getting in and setting up a basic machine and just sort of getting things started like I said there's a lot more technical detail and things we can get deeper into but I really just wanted to get you guys started if you guys have any questions be post them below in the comments and let me know and maybe we can get a good discussion if you guys have questions get stuck somewhere that'll definitely help everyone out there and if, if I see something that's pretty cool maybe I'll do a video on it to sort of explain what you maybe or may not understand or something you may need, want to see a little bit more advanced just kind of let me know um, also be sure to check our video here if you want to really test out Windows 10 and how to install the Windows 10 technical preview definitely since we recently heard some pretty cool things about it and I have a video, another video of five awesome cool things about Windows 10 and some of those features are now available in the latest build update so you might want to jump on and check out how to install 10 technical previews see some of those cool things there the video links to those will be in the description also at the end of the video here but if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up it definitely helps us out here also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and also join us on our Facebook fan page with some great discussion about all things technology also follow us on twitter as well too and check out our main website at bw1.com which has a bowl of great articles reviews tech news and all that sorts of good stuff the link to all of that is in the description you know everything's always below in that description and always remember to live your tech world in high definition thanks for watching